Hello and welcome to Dawn Chorus Writes, Miraculous Ladybug fan fiction and audio fiction. This one is a special collaborative piece written by both myself, Dawn, hello, and Sheikah. We have worked together to create this epic um, one shot um, called Heart's Desires for Holiday Magic Season. So I hope you enjoy it smash that like button down below make sure you get yourself cozy because it's a long one and make sure you comment down below what you think of it and subscribe so you don't miss out on future treats like this heart's desire and done marinette declared proudly fluffing the green ribbon bow on the last of her presents and just in time too Tiki said, flying over to the desk with a gold Christmas bell. You are due to meet up with Cat in ten minutes. I know, I just want his present to look perfect. He is my partner after all. And he's lucky to have you as Ladybug Marinette, her little friend said. I'm the lucky one. I don't know what I would do without him. This year has been hard on our partnership and I want to make sure he knows I care. She looked at the two boxes, decorated with golden Christmas bells to mark that they were going to Cat Noir. She had grown closer to him over the last few months as he made a point of dropping by to check in on her as Marinette after nearby Akuma fights and sometimes just to talk or play video games. But at the same time, she felt the strain on her partnership ever since she became the Guardian and since Carte Blanc. And you... Don't think two presents are too much, do you, Tiki? Or too little? Marinette, every gift you make comes from your heart. If this is what you wanted to do for him, then it's just right. Trust yourself and trust your heart. She sighed. You're right, Tiki. I know I tend to overthink things. Well, you better pack up and get going. You only have five minutes to get there. Right, Tiki, spots on. Ladybug found Cat Noir perched on her favourite rooftop overlooking the Apple Tower. In fact, she could see him pacing nervously from three streets away. She landed softly behind him, and he was so preoccupied that he didn't even turn around. Cupping her mouth with her hand, she called out, Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas! He jumped about three feet into the air, his hair bristling like fur, and if his tail had been furry, she was sure it would have puffed up. He turned in mid-air and landed in a fighting crouch, glaring at her. Oh, cat! You should see your face! She laughed, clutching her sides. His tension eased when he saw her. He chuckled as well. Okay, you got me. It serves you right for all those times you snuck up on me she said, striding over to him and setting her tote bag down. You normally hear me land. What's got your tail in a twist? Uh, uh no, nothing, he stammered. But she knew he was lying, especially the way his hand was tucked behind his back. What are you hiding? She asked curiously, leaning to one side to see what he held behind his back. I just got you something he murmured, blushing as red as a mask. Aw, that's sweet of you, Kitty. I brought us a little Christmas party in a bag, she nodded towards a large tote she had brought with her. Will you help me set it up? He grinned. A party with my lady would be the best gift of all, he declared with a bow. They spread out the blanket, a large thermos, two small cups and a bag of gingerbread cookies. She saw him eye the two wrapped presents with a guilty look on his face. What's the matter, Kitty? Cat got your tongue? She winced internally at the pun, but she saw he was pleased. He rubbed the back of his neck, an unconscious habit he had when embarrassed or nervous. She could read him like an open book most of the time, but over the last few months, it felt like he had been slamming the cover shut. She hoped that today would show that things were relaxing in their friendship again. It's just, I only got you one gift, he mumbled. She grinned and shook her head. If you picked it out for me, then it's more than I could ever ask for. She sat down on the blanket and patted the space next to her. 
Why don't you open the smaller present while I pour us some drinks? I made us peppermint hot chocolate. Sounds delicious. Cat flopped down beside her and grabbed the small red package with the eagerness of a small child. He flicked the small bell attached to the ribbon with a smile before tearing into the paper. Lifting the lid on the small white box, his eyes went wide at the ten chocolates shaped like cat heads. LB, how can you expect me to eat these? They're too cute. She giggled at his wailing tone. They're truffles. Some have almond paste, some have candied cherries, and the rest have a cookies and cream filling I came up with. His head jerked up, staring at her. You made these? For me? Of course. She nudged his arm with her elbow. You're my partner. Of course I'm going to make you something special for Christmas. She handed him a small cup of steaming chocolate. I enjoy making things for special people in my life. It makes the holidays that much happier for me. He carefully took one of the dark chocolate cat faces out of the box and popped it into his mouth. He sighed in contentment. His eyes fluttered shut into light. She laughed silently at the eager expression that filtered across his face. LB! That was amazing! Good! I'm glad you liked it, she replied, sipping her hot chocolate. Do, do you want to open yours now? He asked, that nervousness back again. Sure, if you want me to. Okay, but you have to close your eyes first. Ladybug grinned and closed her eyes, holding her hands out between them. She felt him place a small box in her hand. She opened her eyes and saw a beautiful silver gift with a white satin ribbon around it. Glancing up at him, she smiled to see him bouncing up and down on his tailbone, like a small child eager to impress his favourite teacher. She tore the paper and opened the nondescript box to see a short necklace with a small, round ladybug pendant. The red was enamelled and the spots were tiny chips of onyx with the wings lined marked in gold. Oh, cat, she breathed. It's beautiful. It's not too much, is it? He bubbled. Or if it's too small, I can... But before he could finish his sentence, she stuffed a gingerbread man f head first into his open mouth. It's just my style. It's perfect, Cat Noir. Thank you. She clasped it around her neck and fingered it fondly as the onyx spots sparkled in the winter sunlight. He swallowed at the last of his cookies with a bashful smile for her praise of his gift. So, what are your plans for tomorrow? She asked, pouring another cup of hot drink. He sighed. Not much. My father doesn't take time off for the holiday and the rest of my family isn't around much. He stared down into the steam of his cup as if looking for answers. But at least he's letting me spend some time with my friends tomorrow. I just feel like I'm intruding or something. She gave him a quick one-arm hug. I'm sure that's not the case. What about you? He asked, clearly changing the subject. You know, family and friends, normal holiday stuff. Though my papa always makes a huge dinner, we watch Christmas movies and drink hot chocolate. Sounds nice, Cat said wistfully, and it struck Ladybug that her kitty was a pretty lonely person. No wonder the recent changes in the relationship had driven a wedge between them. Well... She said, placing the larger parcel into his lap. Here is something to make Christmas a little warmer and brighter for you. He tore through the paper to discover a tight roll of fuzzy black fabric tied with green ribbon. You made me a furry sleeping bag? Ladybug giggled and rolled her eyes. You'll have to unroll it to see. Shooting her sideways glance, he untied the ribbon and the fabric unrolled across the picnic blanket. Careful so his claws wouldn't catch the fabric, he unfolded the layer to reveal the colour inside. The quilt had taken her six months to make, what with everything else she had going on, but oh, the look on his face. That radiant smile full of such wonder and unadmitted joy. That was worth all the late nights, prick fingers and burns from her iron, and it warmed her heart. 
The background was black, but it was brightened by oblique pictures and hand embroidery phrases. The front had four framing panels and a large centre panel. The top frame had dark clouds spread across the night sky with bright white stars peeking through. The bottom frame had the Paris skyline at night, the orange and yellow threads practically glowing against the black. The side panels comprised black squares framed in red, each with a different image appliqued inside of it. Two fists, one red and one black, outlined in green, meeting with the words pound it, spelled out above them. One with his eyes looking out of the dark from behind his mask, a yellow rose, his staff with her yo-yo wrapped round it, her eyes behind her mask, three panels of white butterflies. The centre panel displayed a glowing Eiffel Tower surmounted by a circle comprising half her yo-yo and half his ring pad, embroidered in a red curve above and below were the words, You and me against the world, always. Ladybug, Cat whispered, taking in the detail and the tiny stitches of embroidery. This, this is... There are no words. She grinned and let out a happy sigh. Oh, I'm glad you like it. The back is extra soft and I thought it would be the perfect size to cuddle up under for a little cat nap. His eyes popped open at her pun and a cheesy grin spread across his face. He threw his arms around her in a joyful hug. Thank you, thank you, thank you. He squealed, it's perfect, my lady. She was just about to pat him on the back when an explosion rocked the rooftop they were sitting on as it accompanied a shocked wave ripple through the air. She and Kat exchanged glances and groaned. Anakuma, they said together. I guess my father isn't the only one who doesn't take holidays off, Kat grumbled, pulling out his staff. They were at the scene in mere minutes, but what they found was strange, even for one of Hogmoth's villains. The Akuma was a giant of a man with a wide beaming face surrounded by a mane of long brown curls. His eyes were bright and his voice as he called out to those around him was cheery and friendly. He wore a green fur-lined robe over a fine Santa suit, a holly wreath crown set with shimmering icicles. He carried a large torch that burned with a warm, cosy light in one hand and a large, full bag in the other, and a host of holiday delicacies and presents appeared in his wake. The explosion seemed to be from the giant bursting out of one of the department stores on the nearby high street. He stood in the middle of the street, arms spread wide in welcome. Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas! Everyone, he bellowed cheerfully. Cat shot her a glance from the observation point on a nearby roof. Okay, my lady, I think we both have to admit he does it better than you. She rolled her eyes and went back to scanning the giant for any signs of where the Akuma was hidden. He has so much stuff and more appearing with each step. She murmured, seeing the tables heavily laden with roasts, pies, candied fruits, and a various of pastries that would make her papa green with envy. How are we supposed to figure out where his Akuma is? What is wrong? The Akuma Santa called to the running passers-by. Show a little Christmas spirit! He drew a handful of tiny packages out of his bag and scattered them like seeds into the crowd. At least a dozen people were struck, and a rosy fog erupted around them. When it cleared, the victims were just standing in place, a dazed and joyful look on their faces, as if all their Christmas wishes had come true. Their feet were locked in place in some sort of dark ice, and for every victim trapped, the giant grew taller, and more goodies appeared around him with every step he took. What's he doing to them? Cat asked, keeping low to avoid their quarry's attention. I don't know, but they seem happy. Do you think they're drugged in some sort of trance? Either, both, who knows? But the more people he touches, the bigger he gets. Right, 
Ladybug said, analyzing the surroundings for potential attack options. Since those tables and things appear every time he takes a step, the Akuma can't be in them. That leaves the bag, the crown, and the robe. Don't forget the suit. I wouldn't put it past Hogmoth to tuck an Akuma into Santa's belt buckle. I'll distract him while you sneak up on him from behind and try to go for one of the our options. And be careful. You know me, bugaboo. Cat said with a cocky grin. I'll do anything to get back to you. I know, she grumbled. That's what I'm afraid of. He slipped off the roof, staying out of line of sight of their prey. Ladybug swung across the giant's path, attracting his attention and away from her partner, approaching from behind. So, who are you supposed to be? She called hauntingly, Uncle Christmas? Because I know Father Christmas is taken. Don't you know your classics, young lady? He replied joyfully. I'm the ghost of Christmas present. I spread cheer and the Christmas spirit to all those poor souls who have fallen into the lie that commercialism is the meaning of Christmas. You call that spreading the Christmas spirit? She scoffed, gesturing at the mindless, frozen victims that surrounded him. She could see Cat skulking behind the cover of several abandoned carts, getting closer to his target. I'm not harming them, Ghost replied, laughing at her ignorance. I'm merely borrowing their energy in exchange for their heart's desire. And if you give me your miraculous ladybug, then I will be happy to do the same for you. I already know my heart's desire. Thanks all the same. Ah, but even heroes have dreams that can never come to light because of their duty or fear. The giant looked at her with what she thought must be a wistful tenderness. Wouldn't you rather be with your loved ones right now than saving all these greedy, selfish people? Ladybug scowled at him angrily. You know nothing about me, and it's my duty to protect these people. Most laudable, but such a good girl deserves a gift at Christmas. He thrust his hand and dug out a fistful of presents. It's only fair for the hero of Paris to get her heart's desire. Ghost swung his hand, releasing a cloud of tiny presents in a spray towards her. Cat Noir leaped from behind his catalysm, shriveling Ghost's robe into black dust. She swirled her yo-yo as her shield, trying to deflect the packages away, but the pink gas erupted from them as soon as they made contact. She was overwhelmed by the sense of cinnamon and nutmeg as her body stiffened beyond her control. The world around her was slowly hidden by the rosy glow. Ladybug never even heard her partner cry her name. Marinette suddenly found herself sitting on a park bench in the park near her house. She was sipping a peppermint hot chocolate and idly sketching a design for a formal winter gown when a shadow fell across her page. She looked up to find Adrian standing in front of her. Hey, Marinette, he said shyly. That was odd. Adrian was rarely shy. Hey, Adrian, she stammered softly as she felt her cheeks burn. May I join you? Uh, of course. She slid towards the end of the bench to give him room, but instead of sitting on the opposite end, he sat right next to her. I have something important I need to ask you, Marinette, he murmured, tilting his head down to hold her gaze. W what can I do for you? Great, her stuttering was at its worst and he looked so serious. Whatever he wanted to ask her, she needed to put her nerves aside so she could be there for him. She would be there for him, always. Those beautiful emerald eyes glanced down, and he wove his fingers through hers, leaving her tingling and warm despite the cold winter air. I know we've been friends for a long time now, but 
I was wondering. He paused and a heart leapt into her throat, nervous at what he would say. He rubbed the back of his neck, a sure sign that he was nervous too. Is there room for me in your life as something more? Her blush mirrored his and he squeezed her hand gently. Like what? Was this really happening? Was she dreaming, or had she hit her head in that last Akuma fight harder than she thought and was hallucinating? Marinette, you are so sweet and kind and just amazing. You have been there for me in so many small ways. It took me a long time to figure out how I feel, because I never really had friends before. And I was afraid of messing things up, but you are all I can think about. I can't keep going on like this, because it's tearing me up inside. I love you, Marinette. You have a heart big enough to hold the whole world. Can you find just a little more room for me? His look was wistful, and his tone was more intense than she ever heard it before, tears welling up in her eyes. Do, do you mean it? She breathed. He looked down at their joined hands and nodded. Her heart full to bursting, she cupped his jaw with her hand and lifted it until she looked into his eyes. Adrian, I have loved you for so long that this doesn't seem real. I've dreamed of this for years and never thought you could. His free hand covered hers and turned his face to kiss her palm. How could I help it? He whispered against her skin, and she shivered as a wave of tingling warmth swept through her. His smile was so wide and warm it washed away all her doubts and fears. Would it be okay if I kiss you? Marinette nodded, too overwhelmed to speak, and the touch of his lips on hers swept her away in a rosy cloud. The next few years were wrapped in that rosy, joyful warmth. She and Adrian were the romance of the decade, but neither of them cared about the publicity. Adrian's father was stern at first, but her interest in fashion and their oblivious happiness won him over sooner than either of them could have dreamt. He arranged for her to be Adrian's partner in a couple of shoots, claiming she brought out the best in his son. He even became her mentor and was almost as pleased as Adrian and her parents were when she competed and won a coveted position at Gabriel after graduation from design schools, both he and Adrian having withdrawn from the ruling panel as being decidedly biased. Marinette even convinced him to take more time for Adrian and herself, and the relationship between father and son blossomed under the delicate care. She and Cat and Noir defeated Hogmoth, driving him from Paris forever. Adrian proposed to her on their fifth anniversary of the day they became friends on the steps of their old school with a pink diamond ring hidden inside an umbrella. But the day had finally come. She swept down the aisle of Notre Dame Cathedral on her papa arm, wearing a gown Gabriel, or father, as he insisted she called him had designed just for her. All her friends and family were there, and Adrian openly shed tears when he saw her. Most of the ceremony was a blur, but then she was asked to give her vow. I, Marinette, take you, Adrian Agress, to be my wedded husband. I promise to love, honour, support and treasure you every day the good days and the bad, for better or worse, for richer or poorer, in sickness and in health. These words I promise with you with the whole of my heart, and this day I give it to you, as it has long been yours. With tears on his face, she slipped the ring on his finger and brought it to her lips in a kiss. She just barely heard the words, I now pronounce you man and wife. You may kiss your bride. Before Adrian pulled her into his arms and kissed her with such love and passion that all their old friends erupted into loud cheers. I love you, Adrian. 
I always have, she whispered against his lips before he pulled her in again. Cat Noir's POV. Cat jumped backwards as the ash fell around him, his hand tingling from the catalysm. If it wasn't in the robe, then it might be in one of the other objects. He kept darting away from the sudden rush of the presence flying towards him, making his way back to Ladybug. Then he saw it. Slow and fast at the same time, LB blocking the packages only to be engulfed by the pink smoke. No! Ladybug! I'm coming! Cat shouted out, racing across the street, but it was too late. Before him was a frozen ladybug with a fixed wide-eyed stare and held her hands out. Crystals of dark ice formed on the ground around her, securing her to the spot as it crept up her legs. He couldn't move her to safety away from this ghost whilst he worked out what to do. How could he let that happen? This was all his fault, not being here to protect her. And now what was he going to do? How could he save his lady and Paris without her? He gently placed his hand around one of the outstretched hands and stared into her eyes, which were already lost in the trance. Don't worry, Ladybug. I'll find a way to save you and everyone else. I won't let you down again. His ring beeped, signaling he had two minutes left. He would need to transform back, recharge Plague and come up with a plan. Dash into the nearest alleyway so that he still had a clear sight of his lady, Cat called out, Claws in! Plag zoomed out of the ring as Adrian grabbed a piece of cheese from his pocket and threw it at his Kwame. Plag, we don't have time. I need to transform back. Ladybug is in trouble. She got hit and now she's in a trance. Adrian watched as Plag swallowed the cheese and gave a single nod. Claws out! The dark eyes had now reached her waist, but her lips were moving as if she was talking in her sleep. Do... do you mean it? Her voice barely above a whisper. He leaned in, wondering what she could see, experiencing inside her mind. What tricks was this ghost playing on her? In the distance, he could hear the villain calling out to him, taunting him to fight, and he would. Oh, bet he would. As Cat went to pull out his baton, the words breathed out of her lips made him guess if he had been caught and now trapped in his own form of nightmare, as how could he possibly speak those words? He paused and listened. Adrian, I have loved you for so long that this doesn't seem real. I have dreamed of this for years and never thought you could. No, that can't be real. Ladybug loves Adrian? She loves him. Well, not him cat, but his civilian form. But they had hardly met. How could she love him? Was he the one she had spoken of? Turned him down as cat because she loved... No. He couldn't think of that right now. That was a challenge to face once he had saved her. But why now? Why, when things had been tense between them for so long and he'd found his thoughts driving to someone else? Someone he could have a real relationship with? Come on, Cat. Get your head back into the game. Free your partner and then work out what comes next. Using the anger and this newfound frustration, Cat flung himself across the roof towards the ghost and his growing mountain of gifts. He had grown a lot in the last ten minutes, doubled, no, tripled in size, as more dark pinnacles lined the streets, exposing the fate of his lady. Perched on the side of the roof, he spoke aloud, picturing LB beside him, bouncing ideas off. Well... It ain't in the robe, so the next place the Kuma could be in might be in either the holly crown or the oversized sack filled with unwelcome presents. He glanced at the side of him and felt this void without her. This was all on him, and he might get one more shot in without being noticed, but coming back for another would be pretty impossible, especially for a black cat. He scanned his surroundings. 
the ghost looking more like a bizarre Santa now that the green robe was ash, kept his hand on or in the large sack, making it difficult to get to, and yet reaching the holly crown from a higher angle could work out better. Cat Noir, your partner is at peace. She is experiencing a heart's desire. I can do the same for you. Show you what's really in your heart. All you need to do is hand over your miraculous. The ghost Santa called out. At what point will Hogmoss realize there is no point asking us to hand over the miraculous when we never will? He muttered to himself. Cat took one last glance back at the frozen figure of Ladybug in the street as the ice was now reaching her chest and about to cover her neck. That was all he needed. He took off, darting along the rooftops at a different angle than earlier to reach the peak of the arch. Twilight was descending, giving him extra coverage in the shadows not to be noticed and ignore the creature calling out his name. He will not be reckless. He will remain focused for Ladybug. He leapt from the arch and shouted out, Catalism! As his hand touched upon the crown, watching the shards of ice evaporate as the holly became ash, blending in with the rest of the ground. But there was no butterfly to be caught. In one swift move, he pulled out his baton, using it as a javelin pole, flung himself away from the now angry spirit and his flying present aimed at Cat. He had chosen the wrong item yet again, and now that he had well and truly cheesed off this Santa ghost, the chances of him getting close enough without someone else to distract seemed impossible. He made his way back into the alleyway again as the beeping of his ring informed him what he needed to do. Close in, he said in a defeated tone. I failed, Plag. How am I meant to save Ladybug and the rest of Paris on my own? I'm not good enough. Plag swallowed the last of the cheese. Kid, there is a solution. There always is. I know I don't say this enough. But you're the best cat noir I've had. You can do this. But she's trapped in this ice and locked in a trance fueled by heart's desire. How am I meant to break that? She said something, but I don't know if it's true. How can I believe if it's not some form of trick? Ladybug said she was in love with... Adrian, but in a way she was telling him, me, but how? How can that be possible when we've only met a few times? Not that matters at the moment. Plague cleared his throat, looking rather uncomfortable. Kid, you know when I have come across you watching those mushy films? Yeah, and you would make a rude comment and then fly away. Well, it didn't mean I wasn't listening. Well, it sounds like one of your mushy films. Heart's Desire? And now that you know you are ladybugs? Well, how about... True Love's Kiss? Plag made a face as if he was about to be sick. True Love's Kiss? Are you kidding me right now? Is that even the thing? I mean, in reality. What? The same reality you find yourself talking to an ancient, magical being that can transform you into a superhero? And you... You are questioning true love's kiss? But I don't know if I still love Ladybug. That way, after the past year... My heart has changed. It is directed towards another now. Plague stared at him. Kid, you are running out of time. And what other option do you have? Adrian knew he was right. He had to try all options. He gave his little friend a nod of thanks and called, Claws out. Cat raced over to LB and found that her face was now exposed among the ice as she breathed out words. 
He leaned in closer, and after the last revelation, he hadn't expected to be shocked once more. Take you, Adrian Agres, to be my wedded husband. I promise to love, honour, support, and treasure you every day. The good days and the bad, for better or for worse, for richer, for poorer, and in sickness and in health. These words I promise you with my whole heart, and this day I give it to you, as it has long been yours. He stared at her, stunned. Did she? Did she just... Is she saying her vows? He stroked a finger along her forehead and down her exposed cheek. In that mind of hers, was she marrying him? Ladybug loved him. Him. Adrian. Enough for her heart's desire to be... To marry him? Or was this another trick? Plague's words echoed inside his head, break through the countless thoughts. True love's kiss. Could it work? It had to work. With no more hesitation, Cat leaned in and brushed his lips against hers. Ladybug's POV. The cheers of their friends and the church bells ringing out faded to nothing as Marinette's world became the strength of Adrian's arms around her, the feel of his heart beating against hers, and the taste of peppermint, chocolate and gingerbread on his lips. Strange. She never thought Adrian's kisses would taste like Christmas, but it didn't matter. She was deliriously happy. All was right with the world and she was kissing her husband on the wedding day. Without opening her eyes, she ran her hands up into his hair to pull him closer. He gasped and stiffened in an instant and then returned the kiss in a way that made a wave of heat flush her cheeks and pool in the pit of her stomach. It burned away the rosy fog of this daydream come true. Assuring her of his love, of their being together forever, that she would never be lonely again. It was her and Adrian against the world. She could feel him pull away reluctantly, pressing his forehead against hers and cradled her face in his hands. Wow, he whispered. I wish this could last forever, my lady, but we have a job to finish. She sighed, as always. Wait, when did I ever tell Adrian I was Ladybug? And when did he call me his lady? Her eyes snapped open and locked gazes with his loving emerald eyes behind a black mask. She was Ladybug, and she was holding Cat Noir, not Adrian. As the last five years burned away with the traces of that rosy fog, a cry of despair tore its way past a lump in her throat as she staggered backwards. Tears burned her eyes and her chest ached as if her heart had been torn from her body. She clutched her chest at the agony, the grief. The pain should have killed her, and yet she lived with the ache inside her where there had been nothing but joy just seconds before. She struggled to swallow the sobs that threatened to choke her as she collapsed, heartbroken, on the cold asphalt behind her. LB, Cat cried, taking two steps towards her, but she held up her hand to ward him off. Please, just don't, she rasped, hands shaking violently. Okay. After several deep breaths, she looked up at him. He stood awkwardly, rubbing the back of his neck. He was blushing bright red, but his eyes were worried and his lips were slightly puffy. Kiss bruised. Some small, unaffected part of her mind supplied. I did that. Poor cat. I'm sorry, she whispered. It's okay, my lady, he said stepping to her side and squatting next to her 
I know you had no control over what you did. I'm not angry or anything. I just want to know what happened. She forced her breath into her burning lungs before she tried to speak. It was wonderful and terrible. But what? Like having your heart's desire given to you for free and being able to live with it for a while and then having it ripped out of your heart when it's gone. She was shuddering so badly that she hadn't realised she bit her lip until the blood trickled down her chin. Cat wiped it away and wrapped her in a hug. I'm so sorry. I had to take it away from you, LB. I truly am. She rubbed her eyes roughly with a fist. As soon as the tears stopped blurring her vision, she saw the streets filled with tall pinnacles of dark eyes. She glanced from one to the next, seeing blissful faces inside their frozen prisons, and her grief ignited into anger at once. No more. Ladybug growled, gritting her teeth until they squeaked. Hawkmoth isn't just abusing the one victim this time. He is hurting all of them. Not on my watch. Cat leaned back abruptly, startled at her tone. What are you going to do, LB? She leapt to her feet, staring at her partner through a red haze. What we always do. We're going to set everything right. She met his gaze and his eyes widened at what he saw. He swallowed hard. What do you need me to do? We need to defeat the Akuma. And when this is over? Yeah. Her eyes narrowed as she followed the trail left by the Christmas villain. Help me string up Hawkmoth. Before he could respond, she was off, whipping across the city in a red fury. How much time had she wasted in that dream world? Minutes? Hours? How many others were going through their own version without knowing what was going to happen when she set everything right? Would they remember? Would they all feel this horrible, aching loneliness tearing at their insides? It didn't take long for her to track down the Christmas ghost. He towered over the Arc de Tronfi, surrounded by the cars and pedestrians covered in that dark ice. The surrounding air was formed with feasting tables, Christmas trees and presents of all sizes, as if he was the eye of the silent hurricane. She heard Cat Noir land beside her. How are we supposed to get to him through all that, my lady? Ah, I see you've joined me again, Ladybug, the giant bellowed joyfully. How did you like your heart's desire? Was it everything you wanted? The boy, the proposal, the dress? Perhaps your cat friend there might like a turn. Cat stepped forward with an angry hiss, baton raised, but she blocked him with an arm. Hawk moth. If you break his heart, I will never rest until you suffer as much as he does. She yelled, and the butterfly signal appeared like a billboard over the giant's face. Then give me your miraculous, and this can all be over. My cheerful friend here could even send you back into your perfect world, Ladybug, if you wish. Never again! These are just idle daydreams. A real dream come true takes hard work and sacrifice and love shared to make it real and sweeter than the false kind you bestow. You will never get our miraculous, not while I still live and dream. Lucky charm. A small stuffed pig, red with black spots, fell into her waiting hands. Cat grabbed her hand and ducked under the ark as the giant sent out a spray of presents in their direction. That'll do, pig. That'll do, Cat said wryly, poking at the lucky charm. But do what? Her eyes narrowed as she scanned the surroundings, but aside from the stuffed pig, she saw nothing. I don't know what to... Her eyes caught a yo-yo at her hip, and then she had an idea. Cover me for a moment. 
Ladybug opened her yo-yo and pulled out the pig miraculous. Slipping the bracelet on her wrist, she called out, Tiki, Dazzy, Unify! She felt the warm pink light wash over her, and the tambourine now rested on her hip. Cat glanced at her over his shoulder. So, what's the plan, milady? I need to get to high ground. Let's get to the tower. Don't try to bat those presents away. We need to dodge them and keep away from that pink gas. Ladies first, he said with a bow, and they took off running at full speed at the tower, scaling the iron girders as a storm of holiday floatsmen followed with Christmas ghosts at his heart. They reached the final platform. Do whatever you need to do, LB, Cat yelled. I'll hold him back. No! Cat! Cat! No! I can't let you go through that, too! He gave her a crooked grin. I'm used to it, Bugaboo. You always make things better. I trust you! With that, he drove off the tower, using his baton to turn his fall into a blow into the face of the giant pursuing them. I hope they don't remember, she whispered, looking out at the city full of potential broken hearts as they lay in her hands. She attached the tambourine to a yo-yo and threw both into the air and cried out, Miraculous Jubilation! A glittering pink shockwave rippled outwards, rushing like a rising tide down every street and splashing against every surface. She glanced down and saw the ice prisons were cracking and falling apart, releasing the prisoners from their dreams. As each prisoner was freed from his control, the giant shrank smaller and smaller until he was a man size once more, the presence shrinking with him. She descended the tower quickly, not sure what to expect from their adversary now, and her earrings beeping a warning. The Christmas ghost smiled happily, tears running down his cheeks. I'm so sorry. He said, his voice softer now and very gentle. All I wanted was to show them the season isn't about presents, but about people, love and friendship, working together to make the world a better place by caring for one another, gathering together to celebrate the greatest gift of all. He reached down and tore the silver buckle from the Santa suit underneath his robe. Dropping it to the ground, he crushed it under his boot. It took her a moment to take in what was happening before her. She captured the kuma and released the white butterfly. Cat looked at her, his eyes glazed and mouth hanging open in astonishment. Ugh, pound it? She shook her head, tossing the stuffed pink into the air and calling, Miraculous Ladybug. The job done. Paris saved. Ladybug dropped to her knees, shivering with shock, reaction and the cold. This was a victory, but it sure didn't feel like it to her. She had her heart broken, and unlike everything else, it didn't get fixed with the rest of Paris. That was the part of the price of being a ladybug, a price no one else could ever understand. Ladybug? A soft voice asked. She looked up through the new tears and saw a department store Santa leaning on one side of her and her partner on the other. I don't exactly know what happened, but I'm sorry if I hurt you. That was the last thing I ever wanted. Me too, LB, Cat whispered. She swallowed hard. She clenched her hand to her fist to still the shaking and held it out to them with a forceful smile. They tapped fists with her as the earrings beeped again. Cat scooped her up and launched her into the rooftops. He placed her into a nook sheltered from prying eyes, then hid behind a nearby chimney so that she could drop her transformation. She gave Tiki and Dazzy each a macaroon and rested her burning cheeks against the cold brickwork. How did you break me free? She asked softly, almost hoping he had gone, but she knew him too well. When you were frozen, he started, his voice uneasy with nerves, and she could imagine him rubbing the back of his neck. I could hear your side of the conversation. You, you called me by my civilian name and said, he paused, her heart leapt into her throat as his voice became quieter and shyer. You said 
you were giving me your heart and that you loved me. She gasped. What little strength she had left swept away by the realisation of what she said and what she had done and to whom. Adrian, she said from her mouth gone dry. Nice to meet you, Ladybug. He quipped from the other side of the chimney, but his voice was tense and strained. Adrian Agress. She could hope she was wrong, and this was someone else with the first same name, and that this was a fluke, but... Yeah. <laughs> Surprise? Marinette buried her face in her hands. This day couldn't get any worse. Cat Noir, her partner, the boy who sacrificed his life for hers time and time again, the one who had declared his love for her and she had pushed him away by the nose, was Adrian Agress? The boy she had been madly in love with for the last several years and the one she had just had her heart broken over. The boy who was in love with someone else who turned out to be her alter ego while still claiming that she was just a friend. The boy who visited her because he was lonely that she had been keeping him at arm's length. Her head was spinning. This was all too much. Oh, someone stop the world. I need to get off. That was when she realised Cat, no, Adrian, was still talking and she hadn't been listening. And that was when Plag said it sounded like a romantic film and suggested true love's kiss, so I tried it. She heard him shuffling behind the chimney, scurrying in the slates with his boots. It was the only thing I could think of, Ladybug, honest. I wasn't trying anything else, I promise. Christmas Ghost got so much bigger once you were hit, I didn't know what else to do. Please? Here, his voice grew very quiet again. Please, don't hate me, milady. She looked at Tiki in utter embarrassment. Her little friend just gave her a worried look and cuddled her cheek in sympathy. Marinette sighed. She knew she couldn't remain silent without hurting Adrian more, but now there was this confusion added to the bitter, raging hollow in her chest. Her self-control had been eroded by heartache, grief, rage and shock in the last hour, and she had to get away soon before she broken down. Before she did something, she would regret even more. I... I could never hate you. Adrian, she stammered, you have always been so quiet and sent before both sides of you, always protecting me and being a good partner and a wonderful friend, but oh, I have been in love with you for years and couldn't bring myself to tell you. Tiki spots on! A flash of red later and Ladybug ran away. She ran as fast and far as her legs and Yo-Yo could carry her and what was left of her poor heart breaking anew because now she had surely lost both sides of him, lost both Cat and Adrian, partner, friend and secret love all in one fell swoop. There was no hope for her poor heart now and without Cat... She was no longer Ladybug. Cat Noir's POV. Ladybug, please! Cat called out. His voice carried away on the wind, but she didn't stop. And he had no idea what to do next. Cat slumped his back against the wall and rested his head into his hands. The day had been long and filled with revelations, all of which were becoming jumbled inside his mind and heart. Ladybug loved Adrian. Him. She had been in love with him for years. His mind struggled to comprehend it, but his heart knew the answer. When he had kissed Ladybug, using true love's kiss, 
He believed it had been the love he had placed in the back of his thoughts, trying to deny whilst moving on. And oh, how she had kissed him back, losing himself in the moment until he had forced himself to take a step back. And yet, when he was hit with the gift from the jubilation, seeing his true heart's desire and the warmth he had felt seeing Marinette's face beaming at him with a love and tenderness in her eyes as he declared his love to her. But how? How had it been Marinette he had seen and not Ladybug? How had a true love's kiss worked when his heart showed him he loved Marinette? He heard the final beep call out and saw Plague flying out in front of him. Adrian held the piece of cheese out in front of him. Plague, answer me truthfully. Is Ladybug Marinette? What are you talking about, kid? I mean it, Plague. If you want this cheese, answer me. You're going to refuse my cheese? Not if you answer me. Wow, kid. But I think you already know the answer to that question. So, Marinette is Ladybug. That is how the kiss worked because, really, I was Kissing Marinette? But also Ladybug? I thought it was because... He heard Plague's stomach grumble and threw out the piece of cheese he was holding to his little friend. All this time, it had been her? She loves me. To the point, I heard her give out her vows. How do I make this right, Plague? I love her and she loves me. She knows I'm Adrian, but she doesn't know. I know she is. Do I tell her? Adrian felt his mind overflow with thoughts and emotions. His princess was also his lady. She had held Cat back because she loved Adrian. How was all this possible? How had he missed the fact that Marinette felt this way towards him? Kid, if you really want my opinion, tell her and be honest. She deserves it. But her heart is breaking after losing what she thought was real and then discovered that it had been a lie. It had been a lacuma. Then show her it can be real, kid. Do I really need to spell this out to you? Plag groaned. Tell her the truth. Tell her what my heart desire is. Tell her how much I love both sides of her, as Adrian and as Cat. His mind scanned through his thoughts until he came up with a plan. I know what I need to do. Plag, claws out. Without realising it, he had already made half of the gesture with his Christmas gift for Marinette. He had been trying to find a natural way to give it to her, to tell her as Adrian how he felt, and spent the rest of the night making sure all the other details were in place to add to the gift. The Christmas bells rang out from Notre Dame for all of Paris to hear, and Adrian had a few hours before his designated slot with his father to exchange their one gift. He had rehearsed what he was going to say and had the gift ready. He had convinced Natalie to allow some time with his friends in the morning since it was Christmas, but there was only one place he wanted to go. He stood at the side door of the bakery, held his breath and pressed the doorbell. Merry Christmas, Adrian. What brings you here? Marinette's eyes widened and fumbled on the spot at this sudden surprise. He glanced at her in a cosy snowflake jumper, skinny jeans and a Santa hat, giving her a wide smile. I wanted to give you the Christmas present I had gotten you. 
I hope you don't mind me calling around like this. I'm not interrupting your traditions, am I? Adrian blurted out, losing the control from the start as the nerves took over. Oh, really? Wow, thank you. No, I mean, it it's fine, it's good. We don't, I mean, do you have, do you have time to come in? For hot chocolate? She pulled down her sleeves in a nervous gesture and stepped to one side to give him space to enter. I would love that, Marinette. I have a few hours before I need to return. Her eyes widened at the comment. Great! She led him up the stairs and he could hear Tom singing out to the carols that were emitted out of the apartment. Maman, Papa, we have a visitor. Merry Christmas, Mr. and Mrs. Dupan Chang. Adrian gave a halfway to Marinette's parents, who were dancing around the kitchen and couldn't help smiling at the joyous scene. Merry Christmas, Adrian! So lovely of you to join us! Tom shouted out, his head angled over his shoulder as he stirred a mixture in a bowl. So nice to see you, Adrian. Would you like a hot chocolate to warm you through? Sabine asked before opening one of the cupboards and pulled something out and then moved to remove the milk. Thank you, my mum. I'm just going to take Adrian upstairs for a minute. We'll come back down. Marinette gestured as she climbed the stairs to her loft bedroom. Okay, my dear. Sabrine called after her with a smile. Marinette closed the trap door behind her and without able to hold his gaze, moved over to her desk as Adrian followed her, reaching into his pocket and pulled out a pink box with a golden ribbon. Marinette... I have been wanting to say for a while how much you mean to me, how much I care for you, how maybe you might feel the same way, but I didn't know what words to use, so instead I got you this. The heat rose in his cheeks, his heart pounded whilst his stomach kept doing somersaults. Her mouth hung open in response as she took the gift from his hand and glanced down at the rectangle box. It looked like she wanted to say something but no words came out of her mouth. As she opened the gift, her eyes scanned the tiny charms and then stared back at Adrian, going back and forth until the information sank in. It started off telling the story of us. How the moments you have been there for me had meant the world, but after yesterday and you gave me the blanket spanning our own story and discovering my princess was also my lady, I spent the night searching for additional charms to tell both sides of our journey, bringing them together as one with enough room to keep adding to it, year after year, together, something we can pass on. He cleared his throat. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself, but I love you. As Marinette and as Ladybug, I just hope you can or do feel the same about me. How? How did you find out, Adrian? Her eyes followed as her fingers ran across the charms of a cat beside a ladybug, red and black jewels set into white gold, a music note, a princess, a thimble, an enamel rose beside a moon and a star, all hanging from a rope-style bracelet of white gold. He could tell she was back on the tipping edge and how much he wanted to reach out to her, comfort her and pull her into a protection of his arms. To be honest, my feelings towards you, Marinette, have been growing over the past few months and was hoping to reveal my heart to you with this gift, but after yesterday, what we had gone through and witnessed, you discovering that I was Cat Noir, I didn't think it was possible to think that you could be Ladybug. That, perhaps the kiss, had picked up my residue feelings for you as Ladybug, but then when you sent out the jubilation and it was you, I saw as my heart desire. It was you, Marinette, 
whom I love. Which meant you also had to be Ladybug. He couldn't stop himself reaching out, cupping her downward face, and brushed away the tears, taking a step closer to her. I didn't just simply want to tell you how much you mean the world to me. I wanted to show you how we fit together, both parts of us, with plenty of room for our future together. I love you so much. Hey, Adrian. I don't know what to say. For the first time, she caught his gaze and leant into his hand that was still cupping her face. You know. You actually know that I'm Ladybug because of the kiss. She blushed, darting her eyes down again. He lifted her chin back up and paused, waiting for her ocean eyes to look onto his. I know because I realise my heart's desire, which is you. It has always been you. I just hope that I love you as Adrian and as Cat, knowing both sides of you completes the picture. Adrian dropped his hand from her face and took the charm bracelet out of the box and wrapped it around her wrist as he sealed it with a single kiss, causing a shudder to ripple through her and a grin on her face. May I kiss you? Do you love's kiss? He leaned in closer, enclosing his arms around her as she closed the gap. After all, we are practically married. He breathed onto her lips, giving her a wink as her eyes widened before closing them. The soft, tinkling sound of the charms shimmered around them, spelling out their past as they looked forward to a new year and a future together. Thank you for listening to Heart's Desire. Oh, it's a long one. I hope you really enjoyed it. Make sure you smash that like button. Please send me some love. Send Chica some love. And comment down below what you thought of it. And subscribe if you haven't already. Because there is so many more goodies to come. And so many treats in the new year. And on that note, I would like to say after very Merry Christmas to everyone who's listening, all the subscribers. I hope you have a lovely time, no matter what you might be doing at this time of year. And I hope you're well, and I will speak to you soon. Bye.